What is van life? Hmm. wake up earlier in the van because we want to get out and, and have a day where in a, in a caravan or at home we just yeah. we just want to stay in bed sometimes because it's raining and it's yeah. horrible. When you're in like a house or at home or even when we're in our caravan sometimes you like lock yourself in you want to be comfortable you've got the telly or yeah. you know things like that here you want to go out you want to explore like it, it, it opens up. Most of the time we try to surf, try to find a good surf, but uh, if we don't go surfing, it's like uh, reading books, meeting people, so many people doing the same, living the same style. So yeah, it's fun to connect. I'm surfing actually every day, so it's kind of like, that's how I plan my day, kind of. And just, yeah, it's interesting just because of surfing and as well yoga and just, and as well because of the van, it looks like it attracts people. I get to know like really nice people and I start to hang out with them. If we keep ourselves quite busy, we're never bored. You can get up in the morning and, you know, you've got to, we've got to put the bed away, which takes us a while, feed the dogs, take the dogs for a walk, clear up. We always have to clear up a lot because there's dog hair everywhere, work out where we're going to go, drive an hour to where we're going to go, blah, 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 cook food, and the day's just gone. I bought the van about nine years ago, and then from having the van, I see loads of people that lived in vans, and met people that lived in vans, and then just, I don't know, the van sort of dragged me in it. and <laughs> just made me want to live in it. And I met him at a festival, and you were living in a caravan and this van when I met him. But I didn't kind of believe him at the time, but then when I moved down, it was real, and then I moved in, and then that's it. I'd never changed back again, so moved out of my house. And been talking about it for a long time um, we were originally thinking of having a smaller van weren't we yeah and then um... Andrew's mum was quite ill so we were having to look after Andrew's mum um, and actually living her, with her was quite difficult uh, so that sort of pushed us into doing it a bit quicker than we thought we, really. we've been looking after my mum for about well full time for about a year and a half um, and it just became too much. So we thought, well, we could buy a, a van and then move into the, f we had a, mum had a field 
so we could live in a van in the field and keep an eye on the way things were going and then live in the, in the van in the field. So we did that. We did that for about three or four months and then the neighbours complained. So we had to move. So yeah, that was it basically. But we always wanted to travel, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, the idea was to travel eventually, but living in England in a van was a lot cheaper. Um, it gave us our own space. So yeah, that's where the sort of idea came from. Two years ago, I bought the van because I wanted to do a surf trip. And uh, last year, I started redecorate it because the whole van looked totally different. And then um, I met my lovely girlfriend, mm -hmm. and we decided to get, to do a, as a surf trip and also a trip to look for yoga retreats and a place to live. I meet people living in van in festival and free party and uh, I beginning to travel in backpacks and uh, I miss my art material for, for living and enjoy life so I choose to travel in van so I buy a van. I lived in New Zealand for two years mm -hmm. and then I came back to Germany and I've been a bit upset to yeah, just New Zealand and just everything confused me so much and then I start, yeah, I couldn't cope anymore with the life, with the normal life in Germany and then I figured, I saw a documentary that um, it shows the opposite side of the globe and I figured that New Zealand and Portugal are exactly on the opposite side of the globe <laughs> so if I would dig a hole here I would end up in New Zealand so I thought like there must be some similarities <laughs> I need to <laughs> search for these ones and at this time we're living together with a friend on a little island in Germany and then we um, yeah we decided like yeah let's go to Portugal and then just like and then she bought she bought a van <laughs> and then we just went into a ski field and worked in a ski field the whole season there to just like get enough money for the travel and then we just started up straight after the ski field and then we came down three years ago here and yeah since then the van is living here and we decided to just like keep on flying backward forward kind of so yeah that's how it all started <laughs> used which was a really cheap one and I started to build things and the two years I have it now it got I uh, modified it here and there and so 
that's how it is now. I think that's how all the vans, the people you meet, they build their vans by their own. They all develop them by the time. And uh, we met some people who asked, uh, the guy had the van for 10 years, and this was a crazy van because he built on it for 10 years. We added to it, but yeah. it wasn't expensive at all to do. I mean, the van cost me less than a thousand euros, and then just cr gradually adding to it and adding reclaimed. to it and adding to it. And re yeah, a lot of stuff we, we, we reclaimed and recycle everything. Yeah. This one, it was closed here, and there was a big toilet, and there was a double bed in. Um, so we removed all of that, and put in yeah, a single bed, uh, yeah, well, quite a lot of other things we, we renovate as well. How much it cost? Too much. <laughs> Too much. And the whole van was black, so now it's kind of grayish because it's way too hot when it's only black. And wh what you see here is new, and I will show you later on. It's, yeah. Put in a lot of work. It cost five thousand pounds, which it was the budget we had because my nan had left it um, in her will for me. So we went looking for a van for five thousand, which is really not easy. It's quite difficult because they're quite expensive. We needed somewhere that was big enough for us, and we only had two dogs at the time. We travelled for. 15 hours from one end of the country to the next. We had like vans that we'd seen on the internet and so we traveled looking for them and and the ones that we thought were any good when we saw them they were just wrecks. So and eventually really we found this place, this guy that had this van and we got there at 11 o'clock at night and we saw it in the dark and he was a good salesman and we we're like yeah we'll have it. <laughs> it's a good size. And we it's drove it, big. we drove it back and the problem was that the um, the skylights we didn't have any skylights, so all the water had come through. So the van is rotten all along the edges. So then, for the next three or four months, I had to sort of rip out all the floors, replace all the skylights. The fridge was broken, the pump was broken, the heater was broken, the boiler was broken. We had no bed. We had so no bed. We, we were going to sleep up them. there, but we discovered that it's too small, so I had to make a new bed. Um, yeah, so yeah, it took a long time and it, we had to do it very quickly. Welcome to our van. This is the this is the bike. This is my pride, and we're meeting a lot of people because of the bike. Normally, it stands here on the back. We um, we made this ourselves, so it's custom made, and we welded it under, and it's also uh, movable, so it's easy. This is the back side of the van. Uh, we thought it was really important to shower and to uh, use the toilet. But we found out that it's not that important. Um, this is the toilet right now. <laughs> so it's our storage. So we, we brought a lot of stuff in Morocco and we just put it there because we, we not shower here and we don't use the toilet.
And this is the fan from the back side. Well, here's the, here you can fill up water. These are levelers to, to level the van if we're on a, on, well, not straight road or place. We have a big drawer, which we can put out and put in. I brought a lot of, um, how you say, tools with me to fix stuff. Yeah, it's always handy, but not really necessary. Um, here we have a special compartment. And we have another douche, so we can use outside. We can hang it up on the other side and we click it in here. Never used it. Yeah, I, I, I bought a really nice mattress, but still not as good as we wish. Yeah, there are some, some music instruments and you can see the, the surfboards as well. Because I want the surfboards in the van, so they're safe. Because they're my babies too. This is the front, front of the van. That's where we drive and where there's uh, stuff to, to store. You can, you can have a look when you come in. Because this is the... This is where we usually stay and hang out. This is before the to, to protect against the sun and don't make it too hot inside. But you're welcome, come on in. This is the office or dining room or relax chamber or well everything you want actually. Um, yeah, usually we have uh, we have two seats. Um, I made this table and make it a little bit smaller than the previous table because it's way more relaxed and it's also round so it saves a lot of bruises um, I put in a safe just to store all our stuff this is the this is the kitchen and here we do all the cooking and on the and on the table this one we fabricated during the trip with a saw and, a, and so with a shave, I made it like fitting perfect. So a bit of me and a bit of uh, IKEA. So it fits, it's fitting really easy back in. Well, we've got loads of storage here. Uh, our hats, bike helmets, fridge, most of the time, most of the time the fridge doesn't work because it's not necessary we eat everything or the day after um, loads of uh, extra drawers stuff drawers with stuff uh, gas there was a, um, a uh, there was a um, cook uh, a ceramic cook thing which which worked on diesel and I took it out because when the diesel is low you can't cook and it has to take some time so I put in just a gas because it's really quick I paint mostly animals, uh, mostly birds. Uh, yeah. So I do with brush, with spray, aquarelle, different kind of material. Just enjoy ourselves and just chill out. I mean, try not Sir? to work. If we have to work, then we will work. But we just try to, yeah, just surf and adventure, adventure. And just go out everywhere and explore, and then come in and cook food, breakfast, dinner, lunch, like. 
I have seasonal work, so I work as a kitesurfing instructor. So I, it's uh, in the summer, we have the, it's the season here, I have work. In winter time, if, it always depends if I have enough money and I say, okay, I don't want to work in winter time, I go on vacation. And if I have to work, I look for some place where season is in winter time. Uh, we sold our flat that we that we owned. We sold that, and uh, that gave us some money to to get us on the road. But we still have to work now and again. So yeah. we put we we might have the whole summer without working, and then we'll have to find work in the winter. Well, well sustain it, can we? Yeah, I mean that's the, the first year that we lived in the van. We were working, so you know, obviously just a normal income. And then I sold my house, uh, and with the way house prices have gone in England, there was no way that I could buy another one. So we were just like, right, let's go traveling for a year. So it's it's off of our savings, basically, from that. Once that's gone, then, you know, we won't be able to sustain it and it we will had, be back to work We had again. 14,000 euros on June the 22nd and we had 12,000 euros on June the 23rd <laughs> because of Brexit. <laughs> Yeah, like that, so overnight. we so. lost money overnight from that, um, and then obviously van problems, dog vet bills. Um, so yeah, but yeah, it'll be work eventually. So at the moment, savings, but we'll just have to go back to work, basically. I do building work, and maintenance work, um, any sort of labouring jobs, fruit picking, anything really. Um, uh, well, at this moment, I don't have any work. Uh, uh, they fired me, and I was a sales rep. I sold surgical power tools in in Holland. Um, and at this moment, I'm I'm trying to rethink what I'm gonna do. And I wanna I studied as a physiotherapist, and I wanna set up a business as a, a yoga instructor and massage therapist. Mm. And I organize yoga retreats in Holland and in Morocco and Ibiza. So during this trip I've been working <clears throat> like almost every day to do the bookings and the website and organize everything. I think for us it's a phase. Yeah, I don't. I don't think, especially when you get older. I think you know, it's not always easy living in a van. There's there's always things to do and and space. Space is definitely an issue. And but, work. Um, and work. Work's yeah. really hard. You know, when because, you've got to be settled in one place, you know, so you've got to find somewhere to actually park the van where people are okay with you parking the van. Um, you know, like like most people, they go to work. They. They go to work, they have a shower in the mornings before they go to work, they come home, they cook their dinner, they watch some TV, they get a good night's sleep, you know, and they, they go off. In the van, like, you know, I work outside, so like all my clothes are wet, I can't dry my clothes. Um, it'll rain at night and the wind will go like this, so the whole van will be doing this, I'll be awake all night, you know, and that can happen four or five days at a time. And then, you know, you go to work and you're like this. People it's like not a rush thing. I mean, we're you know we're thinking of definitely living in the van probably for another couple of years, if not you know if yeah. not longer. So it's not a it's not a short phase, but I think you know it, it won't be a forever thing. <coughs> It'll be um, no. I don't know. I really enjoy to live in a van, but I don't know what comes up next. You know. So right now, right at this moment, it's perfect and. I, I don't know, I don't need much, I don't need much money and I don't want to have much and just want to be outside all the time and that's why it suits me very well to live in a van because you're so... and you can move, you are kind of like a little snail so I can just like, if I get annoyed of my neighbors I just move <laughs> so which is really cool and I think, yeah, as long as it is possible I can imagine living in a van so... Hmm. Nah, well at one part, it's like really, really living because uh, it's really fantastic. You meet so many people, uh, you're like alive all day. And when you live in a house, it gets more like routine because 
you do the same things all over every day you see the same people it's your same house it's the same job it's the same hours and living in a van is yeah totally the opposite because every day is different you don't know today if you're here tomorrow or maybe today so if is it a phase yes do you do i want to live all my life in a van hmm <laughs> it has certain advantages Very freeing, freedom, I suppose. I do, yeah, freedom. I think this is what land life is about to just like have a look and just keep everything flexible. You never know what comes up. <laughs> it's simple, it's just the sim simple, free, yeah, simple way of living but having all the freedom you want. Happiness. Happiness, yeah. Just a lot of freedom, really. And not being Enjoy. trapped anywhere because we can just move a lot, move on if we don't like it. It's easy actually. Drive and nature. Freedom. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a thing I think everybody should do to experience full life. Well if you surf it's definitely the life <laughs> because you, you you like really free and you can surf and you can stay where you want. And it's also a challenge. And it's something you should also be a bit prepared for. Otherwise, you get prepared during the trip. 